What's up everybody and welcome to a Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to be doing a Java Edition server video and we're going to set one up so it's super fast and super easy. I'm going to go through all the steps and it won't be an issue at all. As we continue the push towards a thousand subscribers, I'd really like to ask people to subscribe if this video is helpful at all. With that in mind, we're going to hop right into this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to uh, Google and we're going to type in Minecraft server and one of the first links is this link i will put it in the description below if you cannot find it and we're going to go click download this minecraft server 1.15.2.jar it will change because they release a new version every now and again but we're going to download that once you've downloaded it we're going to stick it into a folder that folder is going to be where the server is housed and i've put this over here i've just put it in a folder on my desktop called server video and we can see this jar file it's an executable java file and if we double click it we're going to start some of the server process. You can see that there's an EULA that generates some logs and a server properties file. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this EULA and the notepad. And it is saying that you're going to agree to the EULA agreement for Mojang. You have to do this, but you have to change it to true, save that, and then close that. The second thing we need to do with these files in here is we're going to open up this server properties file and it's going to open up in notepad as well. What we're going to do is we're going to look for server IP and we're going to put our local IP address in here. If you don't know what that is, we can come down here to our search bar or we can hit windows R to hit run and we're going to type in CMD to get our command prompt. Once we do that, we're going to do an IP config. And that will give us a quick output of our computer's IPv4 address. We're looking for the one that says IP4 address, and it's going to give us our local IP. So we can either just select this and copy it, or we can just look at it and type it in to the next spot. So for me, I'm going to put this in, and this is going to be blurred out because I don't want any of my personal IP addresses put out onto the internet. Um, once you've done that, we can save this server file and we just need to know this number here. This is a 25575 is the default Archon port. So we're just going to copy that and we can go ahead and close out on the server notepad. We can close out of our command prompt and the next thing we're going to do is set up port forwarding. I've already set up port forwarding on my router, but the thing is, the trick is that it is different on every router. So we're going to go down to the description below. We're going to find the portforward.com link. And then on the left side here, we're going to find the list of all routers and home list of all routers. And then we're going to go find whatever router you have because it's different for every single router. Let's say we have this HP router. We don't need to click on any of the ads or anything like that, but it's going to give us a step-by-step -step process on what we need to do to log into the router and then to set up port forwarding. What we're going to need to do for our Minecraft server is as we saw in our server properties file, we have this Archon port that we need to do. So we are going to open up two different ports, our Archon port and our server port. So you can open up a TCP port for Archon and a TCP and UDP port for the server port. We need these two ports to be open. And then after that, anyone who's looking into your network can go through those two ports to find the Minecraft server. So I'm not going to have a video version of, of how to do all of this. It's different for every single person. But if you go to port forwarding, it will give you a step-by-step -step guide all the way down to the default passwords for the for your router. Once we've done that, we're going to open up the Java version of Minecraft. We're going to hit play. So we have our Java version of Minecraft here. And the thing we need to do next is to boot up our server. So just like before, we're going to come here to the server.jar and we're going to double click this. And this is going to take a second and it's going to generate the world. It will open it with a GUI which is a graphical user interface. And this is just gonna give you a console that tells you what's happening, a list of players, and then memory and average tick rate of your server. We can see that the server startup of the spawn area took 13 seconds and 18 seconds total from start to finish. If we go to multiplayer, we can now put in our server address. We can either do it by a direct connect or an ad server. 
we have to find our external IP address now. And the fastest way to do this is just to Google what is my IP address. And it's going to display an IP address that is your MAC address, but we need our IPv4 address. Once we find that, we're going to copy that, close that out, and we're going to go back to our server address. We're going to paste in that external IPv4 address, and then we're going to put a colon, and then we're going to look at our server properties file for our last little thing. On our server properties file, we see that the server port is 25565. So we're going to copy that. And after the colon, we're going to paste that. And then we're going to hit join server. And you can see that we are in a generated Minecraft server. And if we tab out to our server, we can see that I have connected to our server. Memory use is still fairly low because it's, I'm essentially local. For the more players that you have on your server, you'll need to allocate more memory use, and you can do that in that server properties file. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know down below. I'm always more than happy to help. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out, and we'll see you next week.